Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 Toyota Tundra Capstone. This is the most premium Tundra trim and Toyota's first time offering kind of a luxury option in the Tundra lineup. It comes in at $75,000, it's not cheap, but it's got some cool features that may interest buyers and sway them from some other premium truck offerings in the segment like the F-150, for example, which can come in a little bit more money. So we've got a very nice interior in this Tundra Capstone, semi-aniline leather straight from the Lexus LS. It's very soft, very supple, very nice. Uh, this is a much more solidly built interior than the F-150, which tends to kind of creak around a little bit. This is solid and Toyota-like. And overall, I think the Tundra is a fantastic truck. We just drove one a few weeks ago, put out a video on that. Be sure to check out that full review. Uh, and I really liked my time with it. This week, this Tundra capstone, we're testing the iForce Max hybrid powertrain. So this is the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 with a hybrid powertrain connected to the 10 speed automatic transmission. That makes 437 horsepower, 583 pound feet of torque. Excited to tell you guys what that's like to drive and how it's been to live with this week. So first of all, this is a very nice interior space, very light, very open, very airy, especially with this massive panoramic sunroof. We have open pour American walnut wood accents all throughout, uh, nice and raised right here, just kind of near your eye line. At night, this has some cool ambient lighting with a capstone logo right there. Pretty usable interior space, lots of cool places to put things. This does not have the TRD off-road package like we had in the previous time that we drove. So we get a few different drive modes, Eco, Comfort, Normal, Sport, Sport Plus, and Custom. And since this also has adaptive dampers, those will control the damping, throttle response, engine response, uh, all sorts of things like that. We do get rear air suspension in this Tundra Capstone to help with towing. You can lower the rear to help you know, connect that trailer hitch. You have controls for that right here, either manual or set uh, low, medium, and high height settings. Lots of camera views, 360 cameras, reverse cameras, trailer cameras. Uh, they're a little bit tougher to see with this high gloss screen and the light on the white seats, but in most lighting conditions, you can get a pretty good view. Like the last Tundra, we have this 14 inch supersized infotainment display. Everything is massive. Um, it's a nice screen, it's responsive, works really well. Overall, I really do like this Tundra. I'm just curious whether this capstone is really worth the price and all the additional features kind of add up to make this a more premium offering, or if I'd rather swing for something like the TRD Off-Road Tundra. So let's walk you around this. We'll check it out outside, see what it looks like. Um, we have, I believe this is wind chill white or wind frost white or something like that, something cold and windy color put that in the description we have power running boards and 22 inch wheels um, not sold on the look of the 22 inch wheels to be honest and i like them even less because they they don't make this truck ride as well as they should they definitely impact ride quality makes this a little bit busier on the road unfortunately and the design on these kind of reminds me a little bit of the fast and furious era i don't know what are your guys thoughts on these 22s i think it's just Nah, I think they could have gone with a slightly better looking wheel, maybe a lower offset, pushed out to the fenders a little bit more. We do have a nice looking grill though. I do like that the exterior surround is painted on this capstone edition. We have a really nice Tundra logo at the front. And because this is the hybrid iForce Max, we have a little bit of a blue insert in the uh, Toyota logo. Full LED headlamps, chrome mirror caps, chrome door handles, chrome accents all throughout. We still get the composite bed so uh, aluminum brace but a composite plastic and uh, very durable very usable though still a pretty straightforward simple bed design no gimmicky tailgate things really the only thing you get is this powered bed step in this capstone which is pretty cool we have a 120 volt 400 watt inverter right here tow capacity a little over 10,300 pounds payload is just under 1500 pounds at 1485. This Hunter's capstone only comes in the crew max configuration with a five and a half foot bed. 
And because this is a hybrid, we do not get under seat storage in this capstone. We just get our hybrid battery pack down here. That said though, the back seat is a very nice place to be. You've got window shades, really nice speaker grills over this JBL 12 speaker premium audio system, heated and cooled seats. Look at that. A couple of USB ports, power outlet, and lots of cup holders in the middle and down here by the door. Yeah, a very nice place to be. Very comfortable, spacious, light. I love the design of this new Tundra's interior. I think this is probably the highlight for me. If the exterior looks are a bit controversial, this is, I think, where most of us can agree the new Tundra is a really big win. I really like what Toyota did with this interior by giving us a lot of physical controls and buttons and not hiding everything in the infotainment screen. This is a very easy truck to live with on a daily basis. Running boards are a perfect height. I love how they just kind of tuck in very seamlessly into the bottom there. Right here, this is kind of my favorite angle of the Tundra capstone. The rest of this, I think, I don't know, the front end's a little bit busy. There's a whole lot going on. Not a big fan of the wheels. The iForce Max pieces right here on the top of the hood. They look a little bit plastered on, a little bit plasticky, a little bit cheap. Let's check under the hood here. Pretty impressive fuel economy from this powertrain. 21 miles to the gallon combined, 19 in the city, 22 on the highway. Combine that with the power that this makes for a full-size truck, that is quite impressive. Doesn't quite match up to the power boost uh, F-150 fuel economy numbers, but all said and done, it'll get the job done. All right, let's hop inside, show you around the front seat a little bit more, and then we'll take this for a drive. One of my only complaints that I've had this week is the Qi wireless charging just still doesn't seem to be working in this capstone. Uh, my phone seems to be moving around on that charging element a lot. Occasionally I can get it to connect and to wirelessly charge like right there, but a couple minutes later it's kind of knocked off from a bump or something and it'll disconnect. A minor inconvenience and one of my only complaints overall about this entire truck. Storage space is plentiful. Um, again, I'm a really big fan of this open pour walnut wood. This center console isn't rattling in this Tundra, even though this is still a pre-production unit, uh, like it was in my last tester. We've got a heated steering wheel, an automatic telescoping and tilting wheel. These seats are super comfortable, very luxurious, very plush. Uh, could use a few more adjustments, but I've been very comfortable this week and haven't had an issue finding a nice seating position. We have a uh, smattering of different camera views for towing and lining up trailers and 360, seeing all, all around this truck. Uh, but we also get pretty good visibility just looking with our physical eyes, uh, which I think is quite nice too. In the center, you may have noticed when we first start up the truck, we get a view of a national park. And that changes every time you start up this Tundra capstone, which I think is pretty cool. So... There you go, there's Yosemite right there. And you can hear that startup is completely silent. No starter noise because of the hybrid powertrain. Uh, very familiar looking gauge cluster here, the typical Toyota screens that show you tire pressure, audio, your navigation, fuel economy. This week haven't averaged the best fuel economy, to be honest. And then you've got your iForce, your boost gauge, and your kind of torque fill battery level meter here on the right. Um, okay, I think let's take this thing for a drive and show you guys what it's like on the road. I'm excited to tell you how this iForce Max powertrain compares to the standard twin turbo V6. On first impressions this week, it seems to be a little bit more of a refined powertrain from a tuning standpoint. It seems to drive a little bit smoother. Um, off the line acceleration doesn't have as much of a delay as it did in the standard engine and transmission. 
I like the way this iForce Max powertrain is tuned. It's not as fast or as quick as I thought it was going to be. Um, it is no slouch, don't get me wrong, but I thought there was just gonna be a little bit more power out of this powertrain, especially considering the numbers, almost 600 pound-feet of torque out of this. It does drive really well though. It's super refined. It's almost like a diesel in the sense that you have a ton of torque down low, but in the higher revs, you've got that twin turbo V6 kicking in and it does really pull. For towing, this is gonna be a beast. Um, gets decent fuel economy too, that's an added bonus. We do get selectable four wheel drive. So we have two high, four high and four low. No automatic four-wheel drive system in this Tundra capstone, which I think is a little bit of a miss, a little bit of an oversight. Uh, some competitors like Ford's F-150 does have that. All right, setting off here, we're gonna start out in normal drive mode. And actually, let's switch to comfort. We get slightly softer suspension tuning and comfort from these adaptive dampers. We switch into sport, we get much more aggressive throttle response, and sport plus will stiffen up the suspension even further. You also get a custom mode where you can kind of dial in all those different parameters to your tastes as well, which is quite nice. Sport plus, let's see how this accelerates. Nice head up display there showing us our speed. Handling feels very truck-like. You can definitely feel the weight here. Super impressive torque. Very nice power level, but it never really just kind of comes on as much as I think it will or expect it to. It is very windy today in Southeast Michigan, so we're getting a little bit more wind, tire, road noise than we would normally, but uh, still, this is a very quiet cabin. We have uh, slightly thicker glass in this Tundra capstone. I believe it's double paned glass, and uh, that helps with wind noise quite a bit. I will say, I think the ride in this capstone is a little bit busier, a little bit stiffer than the Tundra with the TRD package that we had in our last loan. These 22 inch wheels, they make this ride a little bit busy, a little bit bouncy. Um, I would like some more sidewall out of my luxury truck and they also kind of They don't help the off-roading capability of this Tundra capstone either. So a little bit of a con there I'm not a big fan of these 22s. I wish Toyota would offer a slightly smaller wheel size and a slightly better looking wheel design with uh, with this capstone edition Some people are probably gonna like it though, and if you do good on ya Brake pedal feel with this hybrid powertrain feels pretty good to me. Easy to modulate, very linear. You get down to very low speeds and it's not like the Highlander or other Toyota hybrids where you kind of have this coast and then you have to really apply more pedal pressure. It seems to be all very well tuned and calibrated. And here, there, stop, start kicking in almost a seamless engine start out of this iForce Max. We're gonna go back into comfort mode. those shifts are from that 10 speed really nice close gearing too the new tundra is a fantastic truck to drive to drive on the highway you can just cruise for miles in this thing super easy to adjust following distances lane centering active steering assist all these systems work very well pretty quiet at speed too now that we're going with the wind these seats are comfortable. I love the driving position. I have excellent visibility.
Overall, I'm a pretty big fan of this new Tundra. I'm just not entirely sold on this capstone. $75,000, that's kind of getting into a higher price tier. Personally, if I were looking for a luxury truck or a luxury SUV that could also tow, I'd be wanting to spend a little bit more and getting into the new Lexus LX 600. So that's kind of where I stand with this capstone. It's not necessarily a truck that I would want to buy. I'd be more interested in the TRD Pro or TRD Off-Road packages. That said, though, it's got some nice options. It's very well built, and it's a nice alternative to some of the American offerings. The fact that it doesn't ride as well is a bit of a con to me. I think these 22s would be fine in most other states with better roads, but in Michigan it's super bumpy right now, so everything is a little bit rough and bouncy. I do really like this iForce Max powertrain. It's not as much of a big difference as I thought it was gonna be, as I anticipated it would be. Um, the differences are subtle between this powertrain and the standard twin turbo V6. Still makes a good noise though. It has this kind of gruff, rough and tumble, throaty, sound. It doesn't quite sound like a V6, which is kind of cool. I will miss the V8 and the design and look of the old Tundras. The old Tundras just looked rugged, and this new Tundra, just, I think, is a little bit overstyled, in my opinion. The only time when I've thought the new Tundra looks really good is on a set of 35-inch tires, wheels pushed out to the fenders, TRD off-road package. That is a proper looking truck. And for some reason, a lot of the other trims just don't quite do it for me. I'd be hard pressed to choose this capstone over a platinum trim Tundra or a TRD off-road. But again, like I said, this might appeal to some people and the premium truck market is getting bigger and bigger and it's something that Toyota wanted to be a part of. So I don't blame them there. We also have a JBL 12 speaker sound system. It's okay. Again, kind of falls a little bit short for a $75,000 truck and a premium audio experience. A um, little bit bass heavy, a little bit muddy. Would like uh, them to improve that a little bit. It is only a 12 speaker system. But otherwise, I think, you know, if this is in your wheelhouse, if you're the boss and you want a boss truck, this, uh, this Tundra Capstone is a great option and definitely something to consider. Maybe not class leading. I think the F-150 offers some very cool, innovative features that can be also viewed as gimmicky. Um, I would say between this and the F-150, this has a much nicer interior quality and feel and fit and finish. The F-150 can feel a little bit cheap sometimes for its $80,000 plus price point, but it offers a lot of versatility with that uh, hybrid powertrain and the, the, all the truck bed features with the measurement tools and the burger table here. So, you know, depends what you want out of your American luxury truck. And uh, hopefully this video has given you guys a good idea of what the capstone is all about. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.